Eiffel. London, 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 London. Eiffel. London, London. Kept him very busy this year. Made up for a little bit of lost time. And, um, you know, if I have to mark him for the year, I've got to give him full marks and say he's um, moved out of the university, moved out of every school level or whatever level you want to say. He's now on the world stage. We are looking at coming back to the Echo um, end of February and we're looking against um, Tony Tony Thompson, the American. We're in, we um, will be the opponent we believe we'll be fighting um, at the Echo at the end of um, March. Then we will go back to try and make a fight with Shizora or Tyson Fury to win his Lonsdale belt outright. And I would say by the end of 2013, um, David Price will be ready to fight for the world title and win the world title. That's, that's my belief. As talking with Franny, talking with David, the whole team are very happy with the way uh, 2012's gone and his development. I think he learnt more tonight in them five minutes than he's learnt in his whole um, career. I, where I stand, I watched him come out of his corner and I was, his face was a, was a picture when Skelton ran across the ring because he never expected that and I certainly never expected it and I don't think Franny expected it. Our plan was to put Skelton on his back foot but, it, but he showed you how he adjusted and he showed you that he's got a great boxing brain and he can read a fight well. And when you realise when he hit him with that great shot and on the head and it had no effect on Skelton, went back to his corner, listened to Franny, changed the plan and you saw what happened when he switched to the body. You know, it was David's night and he's the man at the moment so I'll leave him there to Price, take that, questions. That first round probably the most uncomfortable you probably had as a bro. Just sort of talk me through it now you felt you dealt, you dealt with what he had to offer. Yeah, it, it, it probably looked more uncom uncomfortable than actually felt. I, I always felt in control of the situation. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big, strong lad myself. For all, all match skeleton, like being like a bear or whatever. You know, I felt I felt strong enough to cope with that, and, and it was it was just a matter of time before I started breaking them down. So I, I was comfortable, but you know, it was it probably looked uncomfortable but I was in, I was in my comfort zone I wasn't panicking you know I wasn't uh, worrying I knew I knew that wasn't gonna last so to speak so it was just a matter of time before I started getting my jab off and, and I didn't even start to get my jab off tonight that, you know it, it was gonna happen but it didn't happen in the first two rounds when you fight someone like Matt Skelton and you, you're as well schooled as I am it kind of it kind of throws you a little bit because they do things that you, you're not used to you know I'm used to fighting top level international amateurs when I was an amateur and, and they do all the basics similar well school but Matt's come from a different background and it's, it's more unpredictable and you know it, it's good it's good because it, it, it's a different type of style which I always said it'd be good interesting fights because Matt's more un un unorthodox so it was a it was a lesson for me you know and, and you know it was dirty tricks with the head and whatever else was a bit of a lesson and, you know I, I quite enjoyed it and, and I, you know I, I enjoyed it because it was Looking forward to the fight progression. You know, I, I, I could see I was going to break him, and I knew I was the stronger. But um, all respect to him as well. You know, as always, a lot of respect for every opponent to get him with Matt Skelton, especially because he's a true fighting man, and it was a, it was a great body shot. What ended the fight, so we uh, you know, wish him well. What about Tony Thompson then? Twice fought for the world title, got stopped in what six was it in the summer? And I think he's going to provide the next level of tests you need. And well, I'd, I'd, I'd say I'd say so, yeah, because he, he's he's still a world class fighter. He only fought for a world title um, six months ago, so he's definitely world level. So yeah, um, and uh, again, we you know the fights we're taking. Uh, uh, Matt Skelton isn't an ideal opponent for any heavyweight. You know, he, he can he can make you look terrible. And we're, we're, it was more for me. I was like, oh, I've got to fight Matt Skelton. A bit of a nuisance fight for me, you know, with no disrespect, because you know. Uh, I had nothing to gain as far as credit, you know, the credit of the boxing people was concerned. So I was expected to win easily, and, and I did. But um, Tony Thompson, a big tall awkward southpaw, Audley Harrison, big tall awkward southpaw. We're not, we're not doing it the easy way. People are going on about people's ages. I mean, heavyweight boxing, you know, people going on into forties, no problem. Audley Harrison was forty. I think Tony Thompson might even be forty. But you know what? You know, it, it doesn't matter. They're still world class. If he's good enough to fight Vladimir Klitschko oh, six months ago, he's good, good enough to fight me. And it'd be, it'd be a tough test because I, I did a little bit of sparring with him years ago when I was an amateur. And uh, you know, it'd be nice to, to gauge how far I've come since then. He probably can't remember sparring me though. You know, 
I mean, you talk about not being not gaining anything in the public's eyes from these sort of wins, but you're doing stuff to opponents, McDermott, Sexton, Audley, and now Matt Scott, that nobody's done. Yeah. You, you must get satisfaction from that, though. Of course you do, yeah. I mean, well, you know, that, I mean, you're right. You're, you're exactly right. No one's ever done that to Matt Scott. I mean, I think uh, the, the European champion stopped in the fourth round. And other than that, he's, he's had to quit on a, on a stool or whatever else because he's a tough man. So this year, I've made a massive statement of mopping the, the domestic division, which was which was always going to happen. But um, now it's time to move on to the next level, and, and I'm content. Don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm happy with the result tonight. But no matter what I've done tonight, I would have got out the ring with the same feeling of you know not the, the satisfaction I had in my last fight against Audley Harrison for for whatever reason. I don't know. The, the Audley fight was. Builds as the Battle of the Olympians, it had a massive build up, you know, it was an exciting build up to the fight. And the other thing I'm learning as well, I'm going through I'm going through the build up of, of each fight and, and the feeling of the routine before the fight, getting the you know, controlling the nerves before the fight and you know, I'm handling it well, I'm handling the pressure well. There's a lot of pressure building on me and I'm enjoying it and I'm handling it. But uh, a nice break now with a little few weeks off and it'll do me the world a good I think. <laughs> you can reflect though on a twelve months that you You've just gathered real momentum, do you feel? Yeah. That? And I don't think hadn't gone any, any better, I guess. Couldn't have gone better. And then one of the major things I'm happy with have stayed injury free and long may that continue because for big men it, it's it's hard to stay injury free. And I've stayed injury free. I've I've been disposing of, of my opponents in, in quick fashion and in good fashion. And you know, I can't ask for any more. I, I just hope next year's uh, just as good. Sorry Frank, I might have missed it. Are the wheels already in motion with Regards to Thompson and yeah. making that. Yeah, we, we've spoken. You know, it's a fight that I, I like. I think it's a fight the team like because it is a world stage. It's on the world stage, and it will, you know, propel us where we need. I mean, he is head and shoulders above any domestic heavyweight, and that includes Tyson Fury, Cesaro. He stands head and shoulders above that. He is he is on world on the world stage, David. But the four or five fighters above him in the world are not going to fight him because they're all trying to jostle for. Uh, a fight with the Klitschko's. I mean, I'm convinced, and the pe my people I work with in boxing tell me that one of the Klitschko's will retire sometime next year, which will throw the whole heavyweight division open. And I want to have worked our plan that we are in a position to fight for the vacant title. And that is, you know, that's that's, that's what I, that's what we're looking at. I mean, we will make a we ha we're sending representation to Mexico this weekend. Um, our, our American agent Don Majeski, he. He's on his way there, just spoke to him on the phone, he's got the result. Um, and just to clear one thing up, you've got Mick Hennessy saying that tomorrow night's fight is a world title limit. Let me tell you, um, I forgot the fight he's fighting. Um, Johnson. Johnson is not even the world top 20. And I have spoken to Mr. Suleiman personally yesterday, and he confirmed that is no eliminator for a world title. It's just an ordinary international heavyweight title fight tomorrow. So, again, we've got another promoter getting boxing a bad name by telling the public lies. Can you get anything on the Thompson fight, Frank, other than it just being you know, a good fight? No, I think it's a fight that puts David on the stage. It gives us that first American name that you need. You always need a good American name. You know, and if you go out there and look at the American... I mean, the other week, the good young American who they were all raving about got stopped, didn't he? Um, Seth, Mitchell. Seth Mitchell. So it leaves the um, stage open. To me, there's only one real heavyweight out there at the moment, and he comes from the city of Liverpool. You know, I mean, people are going to say I'm bound to say that, but I've been in this division a long time, and I've watched a lot of heavyweights. You know, this guy has got everything. He's got a killer instinct. He's got a boxing brain, and the public are falling in love with him. And that's what and that's what we need in British boxing. Frank, when David beat Ollie Harrison, you, you compared it to when Lennox Lewis beat Razor Ruddock. Is this does this compare with the fight in, in Lewis's career? Uh, this was a fight. Look, this was a fight we had to make. It was, it was a fight. I was a bit like that. I've been a bit flat promoting this fight. You know, I, I've tried every trick like David to get himself. Up. I've been trying to get myself up for the fight. But this was more of a learning fight. I said to David when we made this fight, you will probably learn more of this fight. As I said, I said to Phil why the reason I took this fight. The reason this fight was taken. Because I knew Max Gelton would rush out, come out, put his head in there, hit David in every position. He's never had that there. But that's how good old Yanks fight, you know. And we used to take opponents like that for Lewis. It, that t tonight was a real proper learning fight. Though it only lasted five minutes, as I said. I think more was learned tonight than ever before. You saw how he dealt with the head. You saw that he's got a little mark on his face from the head. But you, you saw how he started putting the, the elbow across. To, to cover it, you know, and all that's learning. He hasn't had to do any of that before. He's been hitting people, they've been falling over. 
Tonight he's learnt he's hit someone, he didn't fall over straight away. And he hasn't been allowed to throw a body shot before, have you, though? Oh, because when I hit him in the head, he goes. So <laughs> hit Matt in the head and he was still there, so I thought I'll try the body. <laughs> I only trained to fight three rounds, so it was a good job and knocked him out in the chef. <laughs> so we had to go. Franny was a pull me out at the end of the day. <laughs> Fresh, I mean, obviously, you know, the comparisons, obviously, with Frank and Lennox are uh, flattering, but equally how close do you feel you're now making, breaking away from that comparison of being your own sort of profile and strong enough to, you know, on well, your I, I think. I think Frank's doing a great job as regards to building my profile, you know. Uh, I think the early part of next year to make these fights which we're talking about and I can come through them in good fashion again, then uh, you know, I'll have broke it I think. I think we'll we'll crack it and we'll be ready to, to fight for and win the world title and so I think you know, we're, we're right on but teetering on the brink of that I think. I yeah, think if yeah. he's not ready for the world title by the end of twenty thirteen, I failed in my job. It'll be me that's failed and he can then punch me in the head. <laughs> and guess what? I won't take it. I'll fall over. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's how confident I am, you know. That, and that's how ready now he is for a world title fight. But as you know, we want to be the mandatory position so we control our own destiny, and that's that's the important part of of, of this whole pro project. Is he ready for Flintoff? <laughs> Does he win? I don't he's know. Not, he's not, not interested. I'm ready for Flintoff. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Ben Shepherd and Ricky Gervais, who I train, could beat Flintoff. <laughs> Cheers, lads. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks.